my paintbrush in the air. <laughs> Welcome everyone to paintings and ponderings. Uh, you know how everyone does like carpool confessions and comments in cars and comedians in cars, whatever? No one has done this while painting. And this idea was actually inspired by you. Here we are. Um, here we are. Am I, so, your, am I the first guest? You are the guinea pig. Sorry and thank you. No, I'm, I'm very excited. Oh, this is Kristin, in case you guys don't know that. Duh. And so the way this works is we're going to be painting a picture of a prompt that I give and then we're going to be picking out philosophical slash weird random questions <laughs> while painting it at the end of the session we'll show you what we've painted. Today's prompt is to paint your favorite place whether or not it actually exists. Okay, fictional or mm -hmm. real. It okay. could be imagined. You can create it right now on your canvas. <laughs> this is so exciting. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, cool. and you could do it throughout. Um, okay. And... <laughs> so... Uh, cheers! Cheers. <laughs> Tell me more about where these paintbrushes are from. Is it like an Italian import? Probably. Uh, came from the 99 cent store. <laughs> Because I didn't know how paint brushing worked and I was like, you know what, let's just start small and if it's a disaster, Chris won't be my friend anymore. That's okay. <laughs> I I'm feel very it. vulnerable right I'm now. I'm doing it. Oh my god, these paint brushes are the worst. Oh wait, I totally forgot. I have a surprise. Finger paint. <laughs> So, we can also use these. The poor kids who are learning how to paint on these, I, I it's just... It's gonna make... Whoa! We could use this too. Oh. You can use it on okay. the shitty paintbrush or with your finger. What if we get so absorbed into the painting we're, we're silent for 40 minutes? <laughs> Wait, this is really hard, talking and painting. It is. <laughs> My entire series has failed. First question in the history of painting and pondering. How would you describe colors to a blind person who has never had sight before? Oh shit, we're getting deep immediately. Is it just total darkness when someone is blind or do they like see things in their mind? Whoa, what would they imagine? Because they have Don't no have reference, reference of right. the world. <gasps> I'm oh. so alone right now. So, if they described a table, you could feel the table. Right. I, I can't I, paint while thinking. This is so hard. Oh my god. It, it Someone would, should make a movie. Maybe it would be better as a book. <laughs> um. You're right. <laughs> okay, let me go one step further. I think I was at the Griffith Observatory and we were, you know, looking at wavelengths and light and the color spectrum and all this stuff yeah and then I think there was an exhibit where you can see yourself as um, just like heat waves and so uh, cool. you know the different parts of your body were like yellow or red and all this stuff I wonder if there's a version of that for a blind person there would be no racism humans always find something to <laughs> to use to discriminate against That's others great only you have this ability to like <laughs> say things that are like terrible with a smile and then it feels good. You have an optimistic way of looking at racism. <laughs> Ooh, what if it's, it's oh, <laughs> I think, at the I same think time, people without sight just you related would think to frequency about of sound. <laughs> <laughs> Along the same idea, I was thinking uh, smells. The entire spectrum and nuance of smells. Yeah is analogous to colors, but yeah. it doesn't... And then you were saying sounds. There's different colors, uh huh. and it's like a different tone that you of would hear. Sounds, sound, but that you see. <gasps> and colors I, are yeah. what sounds look like. Guys, think about that. If you were blind and were born without sight, and how would you dream and think and use images? Mm -hmm. That's super interesting. Okay, next one. Don't you love it? There's a little humor. We nailed it. Philosophy. What do you want to change about the world? Why don't you go first? Ah, okay. With everything, there's a good and a bad. There's a good and a bad. Right? You know what? I think I wish the world would teach and learn and accept and give more love. That's that's really the answer to everything. If we, And it's so hard. It's so hard because going into unconditional love, it's really easy to love somebody if they're nice to you. 
but the moment they do something to hurt you or there's a misunderstanding, it's so easy to flip and be like, fuck you. The other day I helped this uh, little old lady push a cart in the rain for two miles. But I also have road rage. <laughs> and so that same day, I road rage? accidentally cut off two people because I was too impatient. Did they deserve to get cut off though? They were slow. One person stopped where they weren't supposed to oh, and then decided to that move. That drives me crazy. Yeah, they moved exactly when I was trying to cut them. And then they honked and, you know, gave me the fuck you. And then obviously I like immediately was like, well, fuck you. Yeah. yeah. And then I was like, man, I'm usually pleasant. <laughs> Escalated very quickly. Yeah, exactly. So I know how hard it is, but I think if we all put more effort into exercising love. Okay, I'm done talking. Go. These Ubers, they feel like they can just stop <laughs> in the middle of flowing traffic to pick up a person. Is that what you want to change about the world? Consider it's that. dangerous and, and you're just, I don't know, you're just causing, you're just making traffic worse. An automated car would never do that, Ooh. but a jerk human would. Robots are so much politer than humans. I would never be friends with a robot. Really? Oh, really? Because <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, you know, when Westworld days happen, right. I would totally fall in love with a robot. Oh, you're talking like a robot that is almost human. Would you have sex with a robot that looked like Westworld ro robots? I mean, do they just, do they want a relationship? <laughs> Yes I don't, and I'm, no. not a, I'm not a one night stand kind of guy, so. Got it. Yeah. Good. It, it would good have to answer. be. It would have to be pretty serious, as long as the robot parents are okay with it. <laughs> Wait. What if a robot? What, what if, if a robot cheated on me with another robot? <laughs> would it? <laughs> would it count as cheating to you? I'd be like, how hot is the robot? I would be like, what kind of CPU does that robot have? <laughs> How much RAM does that? <laughs> oh, is it superior? You know, in Ooh, every way. Oh, yeah. I, may, I might be a little insecure. And um, thank you, fans, for all of this film equipment. I love you. Aww. Love, starving artist. We even set up lights, even though we don't need them today. But it just makes us feel like we're on a set. <laughs> How do you stay motivated when you are discouraged? Man, Money. these are deep questions. So how do Thanks, you stay Sarah. motivated when you are feeling discouraged? You go first. <laughs> when I feel discouraged, it gets really dark. I'll call up um, a friend and just kind of uh, chat. I just have to be around friends. That's that's like the only way to get me oh. out of it. Do you, but when you call them, do you tell them like, hey, I'm like really depressed? Oh, no. Or no, you I, just, you I just talk, talk about kind of Mostly about um, like story. Have there been times that we've talked Writing. where you were like dying on the inside? Uh, no, not yet. Okay. But I, I, I need to, uh, to chat with a friend. That's like the only way to get me out of oh. my discouragement mode. Any inspiring conversation. Got it. Well, well, Got it. Because that, that, that you know, gives you the juice to, yeah. to yeah, keep yeah. going. I have a follow-up question for you. Because okay. you've been in this industry of art stuff for a while, uh -huh. right? And I meet so many people that get jaded after, uh -huh. you know, year five, I feel like is, is kind of a year where mm. enough rejection and all the not so great parts of art starts happening enough that you're like, ah, I hate this, I give up. And you have always been a very positive guy that like genuinely enjoys creating. How have you kept that? It's hard. It's hard to stay positive. It's, guys, don't be an artist. <laughs> be an artist only if you love it so damn much you can, you know, take all the beatings that will come with it. And it's very rewarding, but oh my god, it's hard. So that's why I'm saying, because I'm, I'm going into my sixth year this year. Mm. And um, I have started having, you know, my fair share of rejections and failures. And it's so important to stay positive. Because I think a lot of people that leave the industry um, and stop doing what they love is because they actually end up hating it. It's not always, uh, you know, it's not always sunshine and like I wake up and really that's how I that's exactly I how <laughs> and I'm like, you have coffee that's like ready made uh -huh. in the morning. You roll out of bed, you drink the coffee, um, your theme song plays, plays yeah, and then uh, like one bird flies to your window. 
and just yeah. like waves. Right, waves. And then you jump out of bed and you do a musical. That would be a cool way to wake up. It's usually Every me day. kind of opening my eyes and staring at the ceiling <laughs> and going, oh my God, what am I doing? <laughs> And then I'm like, is this Westworld? Please let it be Westworld because that would be such an exciting reveal. <gasps> some days are like that. And some days you know I'm, I'm like That's excited so and, and, and having fun. But now let me ask you, what it, would you rather the reveal be that you're the robot and everyone around you is human? Or would you rather be that you're the human and everyone around you is the robot? I'd want to be a, the, a robot. <gasps> okay, last one. I guess this is this the last is, question. This is great, guys. I thought we were going to get through so, all of this. <laughs> When do you feel the most alive and what is your catalyst when I experience any type of love for my art, for family, uh, unconditional love. There's just spurts out oh, for nature. There's a tree. It's the giving tree. Every time I visit it, it's kind of in a different season. And sometimes it has no leaves. Other times it's completely green. Other times it's, you know, fall leaves. Some have fallen down. And it's such a good metaphor for human growth and life. And you know, even when the tree is completely bare and it looks all sad, it had to shed those leaves to make room for the new ones. It's a good one. It's fun to sit around and with people and hang out and laugh. It's fun to like overcome something with a group of people that you love and respect. Ooh, overcoming. That yeah. sounds right. When, yeah, when you're working together, all, you know, people who play sports for a living or mm -hmm. like aren't regularly probably experience it a, a lot. Yeah. But for me, it's probably like on set trying to figure out an escape room story or escape room. <laughs> We're the reason literally... why I love escape room so much is because it's a super concentrated focus time of doing what I think it is to be alive is like working together with people that you love and respect to mm -hmm. overcome something and then you overcome it and you're like, yeah. It sounds like what makes you feel most alive is the plot to a good feature film. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when do we share our paintings? <gasps> yes, okay. Uh, please give me feedback because I've never done anything like this. But leave your comments below so, unless you hate it. The whole prompt was, what's your favorite place? If you could paint. If you can paint your favorite place. Okay. Yes. Disclaimer, these are not real paintbrushes. <laughs> I'm, I'm bad. I'm not this bad. <laughs> what you're about to see. Okay. Let, on three, let's okay. reveal it. Okay. One, two, and three. Your, yours is a dance studio. No, yours is a mm, tree. That, the tree, a good given one. tree. Ooh, that's a really good one. Man, I wish you just told me what to paint. You know me so well. Yours has something to do with time travel, a spaceship, potatoes. Can I look at yours and guess? Or will I know immediately? Well, no, you'll know immediately. Do you know mine immediately? Oh my god, I was gonna say Mars! I totally, dang it! I was like, that's too obvious. It's a Mars it's a Oh, I thought I thought it was a unicorn that no, was, it's, that had that poor a, lighting. It was a <laughs> poor lighting. <laughs> the people living in there made the welcome to Mars sign, but I couldn't draw. That's a really big sign. Well, yours was much more well thought out. What, uh, yours mine. is a uh, park? It, <laughs> it's a fantasy land where the sun is underneath you. Oh. The sun is on the floor. Okay. And it shines up. And you just kind of eat, eat them anytime. Mm -hmm. you want. Yeah, that's a big lollipop. I can't think while I do this. <laughs> oh my gosh, Chris, thanks for being our oh, very first this is guinea pig. Super fun. <gasps> that was really fun, guys. Yeah. Do you want to see more? Comment below if you do. Don't comment below if, if you, you don't. don't. Yeah, actually, you, you should, you know. See? You're learning to take creative criticism, That's so true. maybe I can handle it. Yeah, just be very uh, gentle, like compliment sandwiches. Yeah, good job. Do something different. <laughs> Great work. <laughs> <laughs> we love Chris. You suck. Chris's painting was better. <laughs> so thanks for having me on your brand new show. Thank you for being so interesting and wonderful. And I I learned a lot about my friend Chris that I didn't know. I learned a lot about myself too. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we know so much about each other? Um, I guess I guess shooting a movie together and spending hours and hours a day together kind of does. And that. night, yeah. like we spent like thirteen days overnight <laughs> together, and we yeah. still don't hate each other. Yep, that's totally a great true. sign. Um, but if you want to see us being all like coupley, yeah, and 
all like romantic and stuff. And awkward. Um, um, we have uh, our movie's coming out. It's Comfort, written directed by William Liu. So if you want to do a little date night and mm -hmm. make out session at home, oh yeah, it's the best way to get laid. This shouldn't be the, the only movie. thing you do. I mean, do something great or not if you're not into do Valentine's. Do what I did for Chris in the movie. Yeah, that's okay. Now you're curious. Yeah, you wanna go watch it. It was very romantic. Like Good. things like this. This is like. This is great. Really? You know? I thought this was extremely weird and... It's perfect. No, thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you, 99 Cent Store. Thank for you. The